Uh, so welcome to this um, Emerge Africa session, um, where we are going to hear about Dr. Nicola Pellet's adventures and experiences at the recent the ACT uh, conference um, in uh, Las Vegas, uh, not long time ago. Um, so Nicola, I think you should just uh, go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you, Jakob. So it was an absolute honor and great privilege to be able to attend the convention this year. Um, so this is actually the third AACT convention that I have attended. Okay, so folks, maybe maybe you remember back in 2016 or, or 20, 2018 when um, I attended with Alice. So it was really um, quite fascinating to be able to you know, go this year, and it was also in Las Vegas, which is where my the first time I attended, where AACT was was hosted. Um, and I just want to say I really acknowledge uh, my privilege uh, having a, a ten year American visa and the mobility and support to be able to attend the convention. Um, it's something I know, you know, visa. You know, getting those kind of things sorted is, is not easy for many scholars uh, in Africa. I also want to say thank you to the ACT board and Emerge Africa for the financial support um, and arrangements. So it's, it's quite historic that um, I'm attending this year. Just a reminder about some history that um, we became in ACT 16, that was when it became official that we, uh, Emerge Africa, became affiliated with the AACT um, organization. So, as I said this year, I went back to Las Vegas for the AACT convention, um, back to where our very fruitful uh, relationship with AACT started, and we signed the affiliation agreement. Um, the benefits of these affiliation um, have meant um, more exciting webinars, a discounted price for members uh, to attend the ACC convention, access to online resources uh, that can be downloaded for free once people sign up, and opportunities to collaborate with researchers abroad. And I think we've done a lot in terms of the first and the last one. Um, of course, being able to attend the physical con convention uh, I think remains to be a challenge for many of our members. Um, but hopefully, you know, in future we can be think more creatively around this. Um, I know Maha Bali, who runs Virtually Connecting, we've been looking at how to um, possibly do Virtually Connecting at ACT in, in future. All right, so folks who don't know about ACT, I'll give you a little bit of introduction. So it, uh, in a nutshell, it stands for the Association of Educational Communications and Technology. Um, the organization was started in 1923. It's the oldest professional home for the educational technology field. Um, and it has a, maintained quite a central uh, position in the field, promoting high standards in both scholarship and practice. And they have numerous national and international affiliates. And it is an absolutely massive convention. There are over 500 peer-reviewed uh, presentations and workshops every year. So what was different um, about this year? So this year was special, really, really special, um, because I think the theme was really nice and the branding was just beautiful. The theme was Inspired Professional Learning, Inspired Learning Professionals. And brought together participants from around the world, um, offered uh, practical applications, cutting it rich research, there were a lot of workshops, um, demonstrations of new technologies, teaching and learning. And the goal of the convention every year is generally for participants from around the world to learn from one another's experiences and activities of the convention and to enrich their uh, professional lives and connect with others. 
So as I mentioned, you know, participants could select from over five, like 500 peer reviewed sessions. Uh, there were many workshops. Most of the workshops, I think all of them were paid for. Um, so there was so much choice and it was really difficult to choose what to, what to attend. Um, so this year, what I found um, was quite a notable difference was that there are no keynotes. Um, you know, imagine going to a conference and no keynotes. That was an interesting change. Um, funnily enough, there wasn't much uh, for IR hype, which is something that I've noticed is present in a lot of educational technology. You know, even if it's a conference I don't attend, um, but especially more geared at sort of global south, there's always this, you know, a lot of for IR stuff, and it was hardly. Um, mentioned at AECT, there were a few VR presentations, but you don't get that um, same sense of hype. There were a lot of uh, researcherly options, things to go to, um, but also practical things. I think there was a lot of variety and more recognition of instructional designers. Um, that was my sense this year, which is great because I think it shows the professionalization um, of this new, uh, you know, emerging and growing field, or definitely quite novel in um, our African contexts. Um, but overall, a very good balance for both practitioners and researchers. It was special for another reason that one of our um, friends who has assisted us in getting this affiliation started. Uh, Dr. Tutelani Asino, he got a special leadership award. And this was a long-standing you know, award for service. So I've linked to the, to the article. Folks can go and read it when I, you know, I've got a lot of links as notes to the slides. But um, yeah, the, war, the award, he's, a, he's an assistant professor of educational technology and director of Oklahoma State University's Emerging Technologies and Creativity Research Laboratory. And he got the organization's second highest honor, which is a special service award. And it honors individuals who have provided singular or signature service to AACT as a whole, or to one of its programs, divisions, or any other um, association activity. So he is actively involved in the AACT's international initiatives. He is, as, as I mentioned, facilitated the affiliation agreement um, with this network. And he has served in prominent leadership roles within the organization um, over the years, including three-year uh, presidential appointments for the Graduate Student Assembly and the Culture Learning and Technology Division. And folks who might have attended some of the presentations um, and webinars that have been presented by colleagues from the CLT division. He also uh, runs the Emerging Technology Showcase and it's become a sort of annual event at the AECT convention. Okay, so we are really, really proud of you, Tutelani, um, and happy that you have received uh, this award and that we could be part of that. Okay, so what did I do there? Um, I'm involved as a mentee, uh, as part of one of the uh, research support groups for an uh, online research collaborative that has been, uh, was being, is being piloted between Emerge Africa and AACT. Um, the group, one of the groups that I'm in is on, um, focused on his sort of uh, historically marginalized and underrepresented learners. And we've got, we had two, um, we actually had two proposals accepted. So I thought I'd just share the title for the two. So the one was more about, um, I think in our original proposal, we kind of overpromised. Uh, we were very ambitious, but it was all part, part of the learning. Um, so we spoke much more about um, how we did the research and kind of um, where we were going to and people's, people's experiences and what, we, what we'd been doing. Um, this, and, oh, sorry, the first one was more about, yeah, how we work together and, um, and it's more focused on our collaborative practices. 
Okay. Um, here are also just some tweets. And this group, I just want to say, is um, coordinated. So the broader online research collaborative is convened by Dr. Alice Bollas and Bodler uh, from Emerge Africa and Angela Benson from AECT. And then within each of the four, there are four uh, research uh, support groups. There are mentors, uh, two mentors, one from AECT and one from Emerge Africa, and two and, and well, ranging number of mentees, but generally equal balance between Emerge and AACT. Okay, and this one we have, a, we had a wonderful new, um, new convener office or, you know, mentor is in, in the Shroom group this year. We had Dr. Christy Liu, who has assisted um, Alice in, um, a lot of the, I think, things that someone who's not uh, working in academia that much anymore doesn't have access to, things like you know ethical uh, processes and um, you know IRBs and all those those sorts of things. So Christy has been great with helping us to navigate navigate that. I think what was also really interesting was that we were co-presenting, and we'd only you know we interacted previously mostly online. I'd met Hannah at last year's AECT convention, but I hadn't met uh, Christy uh, or Amy, so it was a really interesting experience. And we also had some fellow OCs. So I realized I didn't explain what OCs is, but it's International Research Collaborative or Emerging and is it Experience in Emerging Scholars. Um, anyway, so we had uh, you know, Philip Ward is in uh, Angela's group, and he also did a presentation and brought in people via Zoom to share to share their voices. What was interesting that actually both um, Philip and our uh, groups we used Flipgrid, but it was interesting to see how we brought in. Um, voices of people who were unable to attend the conference uh, using technology in quite a creative way. So I really inspire fellow colleagues um, to try out some of these techniques. And while we were there, I also have um, some recordings. Christy assisted with recording, you know, doing Zoom sessions. So we could then share recordings with our members of our group via WhatsApp who were unable uh, to attend the convention. Uh, we also used, we used Flipgrid to collect um, stories about their experiences of the collaborative and those were played during our sessions and people really listened to them and engaged and I think got a sense of the passion of the people involved in that in that collaborative. Okay, there were some great workshops on offer. Um, so I kind of like decided I was going to focus on you know online course design related stuff. So David Merrill uh, is one of the gurus in the instructional design field. Oh, sorry. And um, it was it was quite fascinating to go to to his his workshop. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't attend the entire one because. Uh, kind of like when you signed up for workshops ahead of time, you didn't know uh, how they were going to be scheduled. So I was attending Camille Dixon Dean's one in the afternoon on evaluating online learning course designs. So um, David Merrill, just going back on a recap, that uh, workshop was very useful for um, kind of like getting from the horse's mouth, you know, the first principles of instruction. Um, his early sort of writing is quite dense, um, but I found this workshop to, you know, make, make things, they really made it very, very accessible um, to engage in. 
I've also been looking at you know things that I could use with STAR, like Rhodes University um, and beyond, um, for this this kind of work. So he has been part of David Merrill's been part of ACT for more than fifty years. So someone with a really a um, lot of experiences and history with the organization. Um, Camille Dixon Dean's workshop, that one on evaluating, um, considering characteristics of your online learning, was really about evaluating online course designs, asking us, you know, we had a lot of nice practical exercises um, where there were printouts of uh, different course sites and saying, you know, well, can you find this? Um, you know, can you find the outline? Can you find assessments? Is this and this clear? Where do you look first? Uh, so it made us think about course sites from a student's uh, perspective. And there were a lot of, a uh, lot of interesting group activities that got us to engage and question our own assumptions. Then uh, speculative methods was presented by George Valencianos. And that was really, you know, fascinating and, and also quite creative, uh, which I enjoyed. We had to think about um, what a course, you know, a student learning experience would look like in the year 2030, um, and and sort of do some do some speculative speculative work. So one of the things that um, one of the methods, other than um, sort of trends and that kind of thing is to do with um, um, narratives and what what do people highlight? What do they foreground uh, in in their narratives? And what does this say about about future? The other one, I think I, I attended a little bit of the culture and instructional design one. Uh, I think I may have been presenting at the same time. I had something else there. And on Friday, I missed Rebecca Reese and co. I missed your mentoring one, um, which I apologize for again. Um, but I really was, was very keen on attending that one as well. Oopsie. Okay. So I attended so many, but my absolute, absolute favorite and highlight was this one um, that was actually organized, was a panel organized by the Graduate Student Assembly, and it was on educational technology, social justice, and critical whiteness. And who you see in the picture there is Camille Dixon-Dean, Amy Bradshaw, and Deepak Sapramoni. And um, members of the GSA, in particular Kai Novak and Jennifer England, actually curated a wonderful reading list that folks can engage with. And I'll share that um, after the session. And the, in, essentially, the, you know, the premise of this kind of work is that educational technology is not neutral uh, and nor is, you know, teaching and learning created in a post-racial colorblind space. Um, and their discussion included using a critical whiteness lens on how educational technology and instructional design is taught and researched. And the goal was sort of to account for both sides of dominant culture, colonialism, and systemic racism, and go beyond a discussion of, you know, multiculturalism. Um, so I thought that was really, you know, deep um, and critical. I would have loved to have attended more sessions uh, facilitated and hosted by the CLT division, but unfortunately, um, these were either sessions where I was presenting or had another commitment or something that I really wanted to go and see. Um, so yeah, tough choices with um, over 500 options to go to. Okay, another one that I loved was the breakfast uh, with the uh, with the champions, um, and especially you know George is always so engaging, and he spoke about how he even has trouble uh, with writing, and work he's doing at the moment on flexible learning. He's always been someone 
that I followed because of his interest in uh, network scholarship. Um, but it so happened that many of us around the table were women. So he reminded us about you know, things that we could look into, like the fem, fem ed tech voices um, and Anna Donaldson's work. Um, yeah, and, and overall, you know, in the, within the group, we also shared uh, different experiences um, of writing. Okay, I'm really sorry, I've still got insert names there. I had connected with everyone on WhatsApp and got everyone's details. Um, I'm going to put them in afterwards. But it was lovely to Lenny um, actually managed to get everyone from the various um, African countries who were attending AACT, um, and most of them were graduate students, um, got us all together. And it was nice to have a feel of perhaps a potential, you know, AECT Africa <laughs> um, group one day. Because we've got, there's a lot of representation from other countries, particular, you know, Korea, China, Japan, um, but not many from Africa. So it's nice to see that um, we have a group um, that is growing. Uh, many of us uh, were students, are students um, in the US from various countries, Liberia, Nigeria, um, it was absolutely, you know, it was, it was quite, quite amazing. Okay, then uh, one of my other favorite divisions and activities is, you know, the international division just has so many exciting, you know, they always do something exciting and it's great to be part of this division. Uh, you always have someone interesting to chat to and connect with and they have lovely you know, snacks on the tables um, from across the world. There's an, uh, like a booth that is you know, always manned by someone that if you're bored or you wanna to chat to someone, you just go to the international division table. Um, and there was even a session this year where people who are part of the international uh, division could connect and share what they were presenting about. So in a way, even though I couldn't attend as many presentations I would, as I would have liked, I could dip into um, what other people were doing. Okay, some notable special meetings. I met um, Karen Vignare who had I uh, presented a webinar for us previously on adaptive learning. I uh, met her face to face at the convention. I also met up with Tom Reeves and I even won a book on design based research. It was one, not that I did anything special, it was just who's come to the convention, who had to travel furthest to get to the convention. Um, so that is Tom on the top right. And at the bottom, right is Patricia Young, who is also one of the mentors for the Instructional Design um, Research Support Group. It was nice to meet her again face to face. And then bottom left is Jill Stefaniak, who writes a lot about instructional designers' practices. Um, I currently am supervising a master's uh, student thesis and she's looking at instructional designers' uh, practices related to quality. So it was nice to connect with Jill and record some of her sessions uh, for my student uh, and share these with her when I got back. And I also just want to say a special thanks to Hannah. So Hannah endured a three hour timeshare so that we could get free uh, dinner and tickets to see a wonderful show uh, called, called Las Vegas and have something nice, social. And um, yeah, I just want to say thanks again, Hannah, for that. It was a wonderful experience. And I know we don't have many participants here, but I thought if folks could please just share, um, do a quick evaluation of this session before we play the report uh, backs from my friends from AACT. Um, I had to download all the Flipgrid recordings and edit them, you know, into one sort of a screen casted it. The sound may be a little bit soft, but while you're waiting for that, um, maybe Jakob, if you can share the link to this evaluation. And if anyone has any questions, I know I kind of went quite quickly and there are many, many things I could have talked about. I did share a link 
um, to my notes from the various sessions I attended. Um, but I didn't want to go too overboard with my highlights. And I know I had a lot of exciting things uh, to share, but I thought I'd rather link to the um, various artifacts. So things like the uh, audio recording I did of critical, you know, whiteness of that session um, of the GSA panel. Jakub, Tony, awesome. So please click on the link in the text chat and complete that quick evaluation. And while you're doing that, I'll take any, any questions. Tony, I'm sure you have many questions, and Alice. Okay, I'm going to leave that up there a little bit. Oh, that's an interesting question, Roxana. Thank you. Um, so Roxana asked, to what extent did the conference change the, your perspective about your role as an educator in South Africa? I think the big thing for me is that we always imagine that we are somehow less well off and we're so resource constrained and we've got all these challenges and there's so many issues and we kind of, there's, there's a tendency, I think, sometimes to, to let the negative um, take over and you think they're and you think this is only happening in your context but really I mean these are things you know things like adoption people using the LMS um, online course design things um, these are topics that um, are not new you know that, that our colleagues in the US um, challenges that they face as well and it's not a case of you know everyone in the US has perfect access and that online is completely uh, ubiquitous. So I think it's it's also seeing our, it was like rethinking um, these challenges that I'm experiencing in, in my context as uh, global challenges. And that, you know, being part of a broader community of people who are working together to, you know, tackle these um, challenges creatively. I also thought more about my role, I think, as a conference um, conference attendee and kind of like sort of social social justice uh, perspective around representation and how to get um, the diversity of voices, uh, you know, people more involved. And it surprised me how many people don't, don't do that. Um, you know, sometimes we need to be a bit more creative in how we... Um, we or sometimes we need particular kinds of conference participation to get the diversity and representation um, that we might you know might want or that brings a different flavor and perspective okay how could we build on and deepen the collaboration between emerge africa and act tony asks um, I think there was a lot of interest in the online research support group. Everyone was like, you know, when, how can we join? And <laughs> um, so that, that I think is something that could possibly uh, be expanded. I also joined uh, Chitlani, um set up a WhatsApp group between, um, with all the people from uh, 
uh, from various African countries who attended the, uh, the convention. Um, so that I think, you know, sort of networking and that that might also play a role. Um, yeah, I think there's, there's always so much we can do. I mean, lots of topics that were presented that I think would be of interest to Emerge um, Africa members that um, you know I will be contacting. Um, like I think we could definitely probably do something uh, with that that similar panel um, that the GSA hosted. Oh, there's there's so much. I think there's so much potential because. Uh, if you think about it, a conference is, you know, three, four, however many days, and then it's over. And it would be nice to have um, sort of shorter, deeper engagements uh, throughout the year with, we can give more focus and attention. Okay, so Tony asked as well, what are the most potent concepts or practices that you learned about on our bringing back home? Um, I think, it's, I think, I, I mean, I've been in this field for quite a while, so there was nothing, there was very little that was completely new to me. Um, you know, here and there, there's a, a little concept or it's, you know, it's, but it's something completely practical that, that one can relate to. So Camille Dixon Dean presented about, um, And I think her, her, her work's been, been very you know, interesting uh, to me, but it was on cognitive, what was the word? I'm just going through my notes here. Something that I thought, you know, this was one of the few things I, I hadn't ever heard of. Cognitive control. <laughs> um, and, you know, field dependencies. Which I'm not too entirely sure. But, but basically what we were doing in that workshop was kind of like a cognitive work walkthrough of what would a student, um, how would they see your course site. Um, so it's kind of like taking you out of the role of the educator or instructional designer and making you see things from a student's perspective. Um, good question, Gabriel. Did the program lineup make it easy for you to follow the conference proceedings? So there wasn't an actual, um, you know, program. It was more of a, um, there, there was an app and you could browse by day, but you could also browse by speaker or by topic. You know, you could use the search function. Um, I think in the first day, which was the Monday, there were only workshops. So that was a nice way to like ease in. Um, what I had done while I was waiting at the airport was I actually went through um, all, all like browsed by day and I picked, you know, li literally probably five things per time um, that I might want to go to. And obviously on the day you can only pick one or someone starts talking to you um, after a session or whatever, and then you can't go to the one you would have liked to have seen. Um, but there was also, there's a sort of speaker portal that is part of the app where speakers were encouraged to also upload their presentations. So I could still, you know, with, so I, from that huge schedule, I kind of made myself a smaller schedule. Um, and and I, I used used that, um, and sort of highlighted things that I really really wanted to go to because it's very very difficult navigating a program where there are more than five hundred presentations. Um, something that I think could possibly um, be done at AACT in future is that people there should be less um, I think less presentations and more you know rather have uh, deeper engagements because people travel so far um, and it's really, you know, the special convention and then you have maybe four people um, attend your session because there's so many other things uh, to go to. Um, a colleague of mine was doing a workshop and I think she only, you know, it was like a three hour workshop and it was, um, she was expecting about 20 people and I think only three arrived. Um, so I think that that's something uh, to consider. 
Um, all right, so I'm going to, thanks for sharing that resource, uh, Tony. I'm going to share the, stop sharing this one, and I'm going to share from my computer. Let's see. Hello, everybody. I am Tutalani Asino, and I'm an assistant professor of education technology at Oklahoma State University, where I also direct our emerging technologies and creativity research lab. Um, so the prompt asked us to reflect on uh, some memorable experiences at AECT and also what we like about um, Emerge Africa. So um, I've been going to AECT for a while, um, and uh, I've always enjoyed the sessions, uh, meeting with colleagues, uh, and, and so on. So there's always great sessions uh, on, on just about every topic in our field that you can think of. So that is always good to, to see. It was great to see uh, Dr. Nicola presenting on the work uh, that um, Image Africa does. And um, it was great to see how the um, uh, Emerge Africa has really become embedded uh, in ACT by forming a lot of different connections um, throughout and um, by also continuing to benefit and maximize that relationship through varied um, sessions and partnerships throughout the year. But for me, what was really exciting this year is that um, I think it might have been for me at least, the um, conference that I've seen a lot of um, African representation. We had a lot of people who, um, a lot of African scholars, um, both uh, established and up and coming, uh, people who, were, uh, who are students in whether it's master's or PhD uh, programs. So for me, that was exciting to see because since I've been in, um, in AACT, I've always really been advocating for um, an African voice for us to also have a space to share our research and also um, to have that research uh, welcome and have a, um, uh, have a space. So uh, this time we seem to have had a lot of uh, people from um, the African continent, whether they are from there directly or here based in the U.S. studying, uh, we had a pretty good representation of that, and uh, we were able to have an impromptu um, meeting for all of us uh, towards the end of the conference. So for me, that was a really great and memorable um, time to find a space uh, for us um, and hopefully to come up with um, uh, you know, more ways to collaborate, and I'm um, hoping that for next year they will have um, uh, more uh, presenters and more presentations um, that are coming uh, to the conference. Uh, every year I host the Emerging Technology Showcase at AECT, uh, where people present what they believe is an emerging technology uh, in their world, um, in their workspace that they share with everybody else. Um, and I would love to have um, presenters uh, from Emerge uh, at the next conference as well. So uh, as far as what I like about, um, uh, or what I love about Emerge Africa, I, what's not to love um, from the, um, the catchphrase of unleashing the network. Uh, I think for me, um, I have witnessed firsthand how Emerge Africa does uh, does to live up to that um, to that uh, motto. Uh, so again, I had a great time at AACT. It was um, um, it was great to have Emerge represented there with uh, Dr. Nicola, who um, does such a fantastic job of um, advocating and spreading the message of what Emerge Africa does. So um, I hope to see a lot of you at the next conference. Hello, this is Dr. Christy Leo. I am an associate professor and a senior instructional designer in James Madison University in the United States. I was invited by Dr. Angela Benson and became a faculty mentor to work with Dr. Alice Barlow Zambodia to facilitate a subgroup 
of International Research Collaborative for Established and Emerging Scholars in June 2019. Because my close involvement in the culture, learning, and technology division for the Association of Educational Communications and Technology and my research background. In AECT CLT, I was Vice President of Membership and now the newly elected CLT President elect designate. Many thanks to AECT for supporting this global collaborative effort on the research related to educational technology in all aspects. Since June, the online collaboration across global time zones and with a wide spectrum of access to technologies and resources have been providing opportunities as well as challenges. It was so precious to be able to meet Dr. Nicola Pellet at the AECT 2019 International Convention in person and co-presented two sessions with other members, including Dr. Hannah Grossman and Amy Lomilini. Much communication prior to the AECT 2019 convention in online environments has already inspired me substantially. It is very rewarding to see the research projects successfully move forward with research design, research ethics review and approval, and the launching of data collection. The group shared a diverse expertise and experience such as Amy's focus on universal design for learning and all members interested in intercultural collaboration and the diverse perspectives on technology affordances. There are at least the two IRB approved research projects that this group of scholars are conducting in the coming months. So please join us as participants, contributors or collaborators. I am also hoping these research projects and new ideas can broaden the collaboration with other divisions in AECT and beyond AECT with professional organizations in areas related to educational research, technology and social changes, cultural connection, and diversity, inclusion, and global engagement. Thank you so much for your attention and I look forward to collaborating with you. Hello, I'm Dr. Hannah Grossman. I work at the National Center for Child Traumatic Stress as an instructional designer. I've been lucky enough to be part of the International Research Collaboration for Existing and Emergent Scholars, which is a collaboration between Emerge Africa and the Association for Educational Communications and Technology. In this uh, organization, I've been planning and facilitating a community of practice around examining the use of educational technology in universities in Africa. We're looking at access to educational technology, usage of educational technology, and innovations so that we better understand how to make educational technology a great resource across the continent. This work has been very rewarding, but difficult because we've been so physically distant. And the AECT conference was especially fun because I got to meet many of my collaborators that I've here for been only interacting with in a digital format. So we got to present on the work we're doing and got to see how excited people were looking at our approach and our methodology. We got to plan to work together more in a way that was a little faster and a little more, more effortless. And we got to know each other as people instead of just our uh, professional faces. And it was emotionally fulfilling and a very rewarding uh, it, situation. Thank you guys so much for putting up with my difficulties with words today. And again, thank you guys for sending Nicola to the conference and allowing this kind of collaborative work to be more in the approach of instructional design across the African continent. Thanks. 
Hi everyone, thank you for the opportunity to share my insights related to AACT 19. Um, so the prompt question was, what uh, were some of the things that we enjoyed about the conference this year? Um, one of the sessions that I really, really enjoyed uh, was actually uh, a presentation by two lawyers who talked about copyrights and trademarks. And it was really interesting to listen to the updates that they provided, um, especially coming from um, those of us that want to use materials for educational purposes. So that was a really neat session. Um, they actually had a handout that they posted in the app and I was able to download the handout and I actually share it with my students once I came back from the conference. Another session that I really enjoy was actually hosted by um, CLT and um, it was related to doing like a collaborative international group and the nuances that you have to take into consideration when you are working in that kind of space. Um, so it was really interesting um, talking about things that, you know, we often don't think about, you know, like um, electricity blackouts and things like that. Like I'm originally from Panama, so that is something that we definitely deal with, but I'm currently residing in the US and it's easy to forget that there's that part of um, the collaborative efforts that happen uh, when you're uh, interacting with somebody in a different country, in a different culture. So another aspect of the conference that I really enjoy um, was also the poster session. I like that all the poster sessions happen at the same time and that there were no other sessions occurring um, simultaneously. So everyone that was at the conference was able to focus their attention on all the posters that were presented. Um, that There was also snacks, so that's always like great. <laughs> um, so I really enjoy the poster session, being able to interact with everyone that had a poster for the conference. That was really, really neat. Um, so another session that I really enjoy, um, it actually focused on online microaggression. And I really enjoyed it because it's a topic that we don't talk about often, but yet is very important when it comes to online environments. And I like that the presenters were giving examples and then they were also given examples of how the instructors dealt with it, how they dealt with the situation. There was a lot of interactivity during the session and I believe it was an Inspire session, so it may be shared soon uh, via the AACT website. I know, it's, I know it was being recorded. So, um, and overall, I always enjoy the conference. I always in enjoy interacting with people and it is it was my 10th AACT conference. So it was great to meet um, with graduate students and get an opportunity to, you know, assist and mentor in any way. Okay, so one last thing I really, really enjoy um, was the Early Career Symposium, speaking about graduate students and mentoring. Um, I was actually a mentor this year for the Early Career Symposium, and it was really, really neat to talk to graduate students, um, share, you know, any knowledge that I have that they may find beneficial, and also for early career faculty members. So yeah, those are my exciting things from AACT, things that I really enjoy. And I realized that I haven't even introduced myself. Um, my name is Inelda Romero Hall, and I am an associate professor at the University of Tampa. So yeah, um, thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer England. I am at the University of Minnesota. I'm a PhD candidate in learning technologies. And I also have a full-time position as um, an academic technologist, instructional designer. Um, I work with uh, a group of about uh, seven to 12 people. Um, some of us are instructional designers, um, some handle video and some do some um, kind of like project management. 
So some of the sessions that I really enjoyed at AECT this year um, was one um, session that was um, facilitated by a graduate student. Um, and she talked about the process um, that she and a couple other uh, faculty members went through to create um, a set of learning materials for undergraduate students who were preparing to be um, teachers in primary secondary schools. And they created um, this set of resources um, with um, that was based on open textbooks. And then they wanted to make it pretty dynamic, flexible, up to date, bring in some videos and whatnot. Um, so they talked about the creation process and, and how they really wanted to look at it more as um, not just a textbook necessarily, but bring in some of the multimedia pieces too and have it be um, like super customizable, super easy to update for, um, you know, for next iterations of the course too, based on student feedback and what they felt was really important to be talked about and included um, as they were preparing to go into the classroom and teach. I was always really fascinated by the process that they used um, and how they're continuing to be, um, I mean, they talked a lot about just how thoughtful and um, responsive they were to the students in their program and involving them in the process. And so, um, like, those are some of my favorite sessions that really bring in students into the creation process of learning materials or textbooks or whatever it is, um, and really helping them try to have a more active stake in their learning process. Um, since my dissertation is um, going to focus on open education, um, I tried to go to um, as many of the sessions that pertain to that as I could. Um, so one of the other sessions that I attended um, was um, a group of instructional designers that um, created a learning analytics plugin for an open textbook. And this plugin really tried to look at um, how students were moving through the course, where they maybe got stuck in terms of assessments, um, how they were interacting with videos. And um, it was amazing that the work they did, they built this all from scratch and whatnot. And so um, just to be able to see some of the interactions, um, they gave a lot of examples of how um, some of the analytics showed up. And it was based on their feedback that they were talking about was very, very helpful. Um, to the faculty in the program. Um, one of the other sessions I really liked, it was actually um, during the poster session, and there was a group um, from an instructional design graduate program, and they talked about um, a set of accessibility modules that they created um, that were really designed to kind of get into the nitty gritty of accessibility. Um, talking about some of the different components, creating captions or um, alt text for images, things like that. Um, that's a topic that's um, really um, grown in popularity and um, interest on our campus in the past few years. And so I'm always kind of um, looking to see what other groups are doing, how they're approaching it, what learning materials they have and whatnot. So um, it's really interesting to hear how that graduate program was incorporating it, incorporating it into their studies. I went to another interesting session. Um, I think it was a roundtable session um, that was hosted by two faculty in an instructional design program that um, conducted a study of their recent graduates to try and get a sense of um, just kind of this vast, ever-changing field of instructional design. Um, they were even struggling, the faculty were with, you know, should we keep this name? Should we change to something else? Is, you know, learning design or learning experience, is that a little bit more relevant? So it was interesting to hear um, the experiences that they shared from the students in their program. Hello, everyone. My name is Ayodeji Ibuko. I'm a PhD student at Oklahoma State University here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Um, also originally from Ondo State, Nigeria. Hello, Baoni. Okay, and uh, during the last AECT, I was the technical super, I was one of the three technical supervisors at the tech center, where we make sure all the equipment for the presentations are well set up and 
make sure everything is, uh, was running uh, smoothly. So I also took part in six presentations. And uh, during the last ACT, I was part of the co-presenters in a paid workshop where we uh, uh, walk through participants on how to create uh, uh, AR applications uh, in branding their resumes and also uh, design instructionals and uh, other lessons which all went through uh, very well. So um, I happened to meet some other Africans during the convention and they introduced me to image and I was hearing of image for the first time. Uh, thanks to Dr. Palit and my supervisor, Dr. Asino, I hope to be one of those uh, active members of image and will be collaborating with other researchers to make sure at least I have uh, one or two presentations coming up for Jack CV during the next ACT presentation. Uh, I wish uh, Nicola good luck in her presentation and I want to say I love everyone and thank you for all the support and hopefully we have something good coming out, uh, at least a presentation from my side during the next uh, ACT on the image. Thank you very much. So that was amazing how those Flipgrids just came in and I kind of asked people on Twitter and on Facebook and in WhatsApp. <laughs> um, yeah, so just overnight I woke up and there were six wonderful Flipgrid responses. So thank you very much, guys. That was you know, really helpful and, and very interesting to share because obviously I couldn't attend all the sessions that I may have wanted to. Um, so I think the Flipgrid responses of um, my ACT colleagues and friends really helps to give a sense of um, the convention. So yeah, that's all from me. Um, and hope you have enjoyed the session and our little Flipgrid strategy, uh, mixing it up there. Um, and have a great day further.